said you'd take away every sickness from us and you will not afflict us with any terrible disease that is in this world. Thank you, Lord. By the stripes of Jesus, we're healed. We're healed by those precious stripes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Thank you, Lord. I want to say, there will not be one feeble among us. Not one sick. Not one weak. Not one broke. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Father, for lost souls being saved. We pray lost souls be saved everywhere we go. Everywhere, everywhere we go, Father, I thank you for leading us to those lost souls. Help us, help us to lead 20 people every week to Jesus. Help us to lead every, every week 20 people to my God in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the word tonight. We thank you for this time of fellowship, for this time of equipping and training. Holy Spirit, help us to not take anything lightly, but take you seriously. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Come on, give God a hand clap. Amen.
and, and in, in this moment for you to uh, be help you in your refreshing, some things that you need to be aware of, some things that he is stressing right now at this moment. And let me, let me just start here from th just some words that I've been getting. One thing he also has been showing me is watch the distractions. All right, write that down. Watch the distractions. And I'll, I'll give you the scripture on that. I'll give you the scripture on that. But before I do, I want to share with you, uh, when was the 28th? Yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday, I was in prayer. Went for a walk with the Lord. And as I was walking, one thing he spoke, he said, many of my people tend to automatically believe me comforting them is going to be by giving them what they think they need to be comforted. He said, many people tend to automatically believe me comforting them is only going to be in the way that they think they need to be comforted. Like, I'll be comforted if this happens. I'll, be, I'll feel better if this takes place. But see, God must be your comforter. Yes, sir. Not a thing, not a person. God wants to be your comforter. I tell you, neighbor, there must be no substitute. Uh, many people tend to automatically believe that God comforting them is only going to be in a way of giving them what they think they need to be full of joy. No, he can do it any way he wants. The thing is, getting into his presence. And leaning and depending on him. And so I wrote this down when he, when he spoke this to me. What's competing for your attention with God? What's competing for your attention with God? And then I wrote this down just uh, as I was going over my notes earlier. What is God having to compete with to hold his position in your life? What is God having to compete with in order to hold his position in your life. His position is what? First. God said, I, I, I'm first, and that's it. Amen? Come on. Amen? What is God having to try and compete with? And so I, I want to encourage you, watch the distractions. That scripture, uh, I, I, I read it, I thought I brought that in my book. Did I not bring my personal note? Uh, when Jesus said, uh, let, "Let me just wait for it that way," because I, I, I left my other notebook. I, 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 he's just been speaking so much. I got notebooks everywhere. While while he's getting that, no, let me wait for this. Come on, say it again. Watch the distractions. Watch the distractions. And so, and so, even though you may not be doing maybe anything, you know, wrong, it's hard. But what, what the enemy is going to do is just try to get some distractions in front of you. And I'm going to share with you why this time. Why? Luke 21, 34, Jesus said, but take heed to yourself, lest your heart becomes weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of life. That that day comes upon you unexpectedly, for it will come like a snare on those who dwell on the face of the earth. Watch therefore. So Jesus once again is warning his followers about the future, so they could know how to live in the present. And one thing right there that remember that word cares of life is the idea of putting a distraction in front of you. And so the, that, that's one thing even Jesus said that chokes out the word, the pleasures of life, distractions. What can I do to distract you and choke the word out of you so that way you can begin to panic, you can begin to fear, that way you can begin to doubt. And, and so the enemy wants to distract you with what seems like is not working out, Come on. but yet, no, God's going to work it out. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Amen? Someone say it's just a distraction. Yes, and so I, 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 I want to share this because it's going to be so important, uh, 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 so important. Yeah, thank you, Holy Ghost. Write this down. You can't fake this. 
you can't fake this. It's e let me say it like this. He's either in you or he isn't. And whatever is in you is, let me tell you this, it's oozing out of you. And it is spilling into your home. You may not see it right away. But if it is not the Spirit of God, what you don't want, what you don't like, it is coming. I was going to say that again. See, you can't, we can't fake this. We can't fake, we can't fake church. This, it's either in you or it isn't. And if it's really not in you, 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 you will do yourself such an injustice uh, and you will, you, you will do yourself, man, listen, because... You, you, oh man, it, it's gonna be like wasted time. My God, anyone else to say it? Because what's what's in you is going to ooze out of you, and it will spill out into your home, your life. You're gonna see it. And listen, if you're not full of Holy Spirit, and you're not full of Holy Spirit by memorizing Scripture, but by spending time with God by through prayer, through 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 seeking, Amen. Uh, through worship him, him, worshiping him, and so, like I said, if what if what is in you is, is, is not the spirit of God, you may not see it right away. But but let me tell you, what you don't want and what you don't like, it is coming. Yeah, it will show up one day, like hey, what's going on? Because that's been in you. It just took a little bit to manifest. Wow. You understand what I'm saying? This makes sense. And so, why not let us be full of Holy Spirit? And, we, and then one day, you're gonna, you're, you're, that's going to keep oozing until one day, just like a tree, you're going to see that fruit of that spirit. Oh. You're going to have peace oh. in your home when it seems like there's chaos in other people's homes. Yeah. You're going to have joy in your home oh. when it seems like there ain't no joy anywhere else. You're going to see favor in your home where it seems like everyone is favorless. You're going to see, are y'all hearing this? Yeah. You're going to see, see what the fruit of the spirit, but, but sometimes you may not, but same thing, you may not see it right away. But it's growing. You have to keep letting it come out of you. Amen? Amen. And so, uh, this the, I want to share with you this scripture that I'm sharing before I, I really teach. I just want to share this. Uh, Isaiah, he gave me this scripture. Isaiah 21.5. And I understand the context. The context that he spoke this word. All the Harley guys turn and look that way. All right, everyone that has a motorcycle turn. <laughs> like a kid in a candy store. Distracted. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he poured it. <laughs> and the one that want one is looking good. So he said, set a watchman in the tower. So prepare the table, set a watchman in the tower. Eat and drink, arise, you princess, and anoint the shield. This is powerful. I said, well, why is this scripture taking jumping out of me? Somebody say, anoint the shield. Come on, say it again. Anoint the shield. Anoint the shield. Right now, I want you to say this. Every shield, Every shield needs, to needs to be reinforced. You see, back then, they had shields that were like leather. And so you would rub the oil on the shield. Why? So that way when the enemy attacks, it don't crack your shield. So he said, anoint the shield because the enemy is, so, so listen, anoint your shield, reinforce your faith, because the, when the attacks come, and they will, Jesus told us they will, the, in these times, you know, and some of you, you're already being, what, what, in what, any area, but anoint the shield, come on, say it again, anoint the shield, what's that, rub that oil. Rub the, the anointing oil. Come on, say the anointing oil. Yeah. What is the anointing oil? The power of God on a person to get results. The power of God on your faith to build up whatever needs to be built up. The power of God on your faith to tear down whatever it is that needs to be torn down. Anoint your faith. Reinforce your shield. The shield of faith. Glory to God. Glory to 
The shield of faith. See, the shield of faith. And, and so now he said, prepare the table. Uh, but, but then he says, but set a watchman. In other words, man, look, look, keep living. But don't, don't let your guard down. See, everyone's getting ready to, you know, let stuff up. No, but you need to stay in prayer. Let me, let me, give, you, let me give you a quick, quick example. The other day we went to a pizza place. I won't say which one. And we went in. We were waiting for our stuff. They weren't ready yet. So I said, we just, with me and my, uh, my Josiah and Tammy, we waited. So we're waiting. And when I called in the order and I told them who it was, I, I was getting a lot of attitude. Okay. That's okay, you know. Maybe they're having a bad day. And then when I get there, they're being rude to me. I ain't forgot to tell you about this, huh? I ain't told you about this. And they're being rude to me. You ate it? <laughs> watch, hold on, watch. I swear. He's being rude to me, this young, this young man. Not the one that made the pizza, but he was about to make my, my sub. And I, he went to the back, and when he came back, my, my, they, my sub came out, and he's got fresh lettuce, and he's grabbing it with his bare hands. Put and the Holy Spirit told me, don't eat that. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, hey, Bill. I said, uh, man, I'm not going to be able to eat that. And he just looked at me with attitude. He said, this is how we make them all. I said, man, that's okay. No, I said, I understand. That's fine. But I'm not going to be able to eat that. And then the, 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 the gentleman, I guess, that was kind of demanding, he said, oh. So he said, I'll make another one. He said, Let me, he put some gloves on. I'll make another one. I said, no. I said, you know what, man? I, ha I have to get back to plain view. I got stuff I got to do. Oh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> and uh, I got stuff I got to do. I said, but I, I don't have time to wait. I said, I, I got to go. And he was like, well, let me give you a refund. I said, no. I said, look, I, because I just, just, I said, look, I, I know. I said, man, look, it's not a problem. I got to go. Sir, hold on. He gave me the, he gave me the money. I walked up right there. Young man said, here you go, Mio. He said, you have a blessed day. Come on. Come on, man. God said, bless those. Yeah. Come on. That trying to curse you. I don't know, what, but I know, don't, listen, that's what I'm saying. Yes, hey, you know, prepare your table, but keep your watchmen. Yeah. The only way you can do that is with a consistent yeah. wow. prayer life. And see, we, we, we're, going, we're going to places, preaching the gospel, and you're going to have to have your, you can't just be walking in there because we prayed to have you prayed. Come on. Yeah, so come on. Oh, now, we're going to be good. I'm good because I'm good because I'm doing the work of the Lord, but have you prayed? Come on, come on. Remember? Oh, oh God's got me, but have you prayed? Come on. No, see, I am. But you're going to have to pray. Yeah. Because, they're, 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 you know what? They're, they're, you, you may be ready. And the Holy Spirit might tell you, hey, you see, I'm, don't, 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 uh, stay with it. Come over here. Scoot over here. Come on, brother. How you do? Set a watchman. Amen. See, you have that Holy Ghost, that discernment saying, hey, hey, hey. Come on. It's okay. Come over here. That, that, that's been happening to me all week. People I, I, I want to talk to the Lord about. Holy Spirit, yes, hey, just come on. Come on. Okay. You sure? See, he knows their heart. Come on, yeah. And then he said, prepare a table, but set a watch. Keep praying. Eat and drink. Keep living. You have to live. Amen? Amen. Amen. You have to live. Yes, but, look what he said, but, anoint, but arise and anoint your shield. Stay under that anointing. Anoint your shield. Reinforce your faith. The shield of faith. Sanctify your faith. How do you do that? By hearing the word. By hearing the word. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing and hearing the word. the word of God. So if you are not in the word, you're not reinforcing your faith. Now the enemy can begin to put some distractions, maybe even some fear, maybe even some doubt. Maybe even some worry. Come on. See, but as long as I have a word, that's all you need. And then, and then you can't let that word slip. What are you doing? You're anointing your shield. Why? Because maybe you were getting bombarded all this week. And man, you feel your, your shield took a beating this week. Well, man, anoint your shield. So you go out with a fresh shield. Freshly rubbed with oil. And now every fiery dart that is thrown at you will not penetrate. Amen? Amen. 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 So anoint your shield. God wants to do so.
so much for us. Go to Isaiah 66, 12. But let me say this. Listen, hopefully the world is already realizing uh, God don't play. Come on. God don't play. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Bless you, sister. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Isaiah 66, verse 2. Don't let the distractions keep you from your time with the Father. I cannot stress this enough. This is the only way you're going to be okay. Talked to this young man, driving him home the other day. I said, how you been? He said, man, I've been good. I said, you been spending time with God? No. I said, and you been good? <laughs> no, I was for real. I said, because, bro, especially in these times, I would not be good without God. I don't know how I would be making it. Before this, I wouldn't have been able to make it without God. And I said, you been good? And you haven't been with God. And he just, I mean, we talk about his moves, he just started bawling like a baby. I said, I said, look, man. I said, man, how, no. For me to say I can make it without God is a spirit of pride and arrogancy. There's no way I can make it without God. I'll lose my family if it wasn't for God. I'll lose my marriage if it wasn't for God. I'll lose my finances if it wasn't for God. I need God. I can't make it through this without God. Amen. 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 And you see, you see that that is so important. To listen to this verse right here. Isaiah 66 and 2. The Lord said, but on this will I look. Do you see that? God said, on this I will look. On the poor and contrite spirit and he who trembles at my word. God said, I'm going to keep my eye. What, why is that important? I'm going to break this down for you. Why is that important? Let me know how far I can go. Why is that important? Because, because he said, God looks to and fro throughout all the earth. Who can I show myself strong to? God said, I want to, I don't, but, but does he know what's going on? Yes, he knows what's going on. And God said, I can show myself strong to, but I'm looking, and right here, he just told us, let me tell you, this is who I look. I'm going to keep my eyes on who? Watch this. Those of a poor, not that you're poor, but of a poor spirit. What does that mean? It, it, it means to have a spirit, a, a, a person, a heart that is completely dependent on God. You see, the poor person, if you don't put nothing in their cup, they don't eat. Oh, y'all not here. If you don't put nothing in their cup, they don't eat. And see, a, a poor in spirit is God. If I don't come and get filled up by you, I, I'm not going to make it. I'm dependent on you. I can't make it without you. God said, a poor spirit? He said, boy, I keep my eyes on people like that. What is he going to keep his eye on you for? To show himself strong in your life. To show himself strong in your life. Come on, someone say, God is going to show himself strong in my life. And then he said, in a contrite, contrite, it means to be, there's a couple meetings here, I want to break these down, a smitten spirit. What does it mean to be smitten? This is my favorite, to be very much in love. A spirit that is so in love with God. When you're so in love with someone, you don't want to be away from me. It's hard to be away from me. I frustrate my wife sometimes, I know. I'm always hugging her. Kiss on her. Baby. It's like, ah. Thank you. Ah, hurry, hurry. Girl, I'm going to do no work for you. But when you love someone, you just want to be around them. And see, God, and God said, it, 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 it's someone that has been smitten. They've fallen in love with God. And another, another definition is the spilling and showing remorse for sin or shortcomings. It bothers you if you miss the mark. It bothers you 
when you when he gave your word and you don't miss it. It's like that, that you don't see you what you have a contract spirit. You, you, you're easily broken by disobedience in your own life, not someone else's life, in your life. Yeah. Amen? Amen. God said, I, I, I keep my eyes on it. And he who trembles at my word. You have respect and honor for his word. What he says to do, you do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Isaiah 64, look at this. Watch out for the distractions. They'll try to distract you from having this, this, this type of, this is the type of walk God wants you to have with him. But he said, look what he said earlier. Remember, man, look, you're still going to have a life. You don't have Facebook? No. You don't have TikTok? No. You don't have Instagram? No. What do you have? A life. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah 64. 4. Listen to this. This is, this is, oh my gosh. Is it cold or is it just me? Can you turn, can you turn it up a little bit? But it's blowing right on. Just where it clicks off one time. Isaiah 64, verse 4. Listen to this, please, please, please. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God beside you. Listen to this. Who acts for the one who waits for him. He acts for the one who waits for him. He acts for for the one that they bind themselves to God. And they say, God, I'm not doing anything unless you tell me what to do. I'm not, I, I don't know what to do in this position. So I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to seek you. How, how does they, well, well, all a phone needs to do to be charged is plug it into the power source and sit there and wait. If you would just plug into the power source through prayer and the word. And sometimes just sit there and wait and let him charge you. Let him refresh you. Let him restore you. Let him renew you. There's something powerful when a man or a woman waits on the Lord. Give God a shout of praise. And so God said he acts for the ones that wait on him. What? Give me God going to work for on your behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at this. You meet him, verse 5, you meet him who rejoices and does righteousness and he remembers you in your ways. You are indeed angry for we have sinned. In these ways we continue we need to be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God acts for those who wait on him. Listen, who go around rejoicing. How can I go around rejoicing with everything that's going on? I've been waiting in his presence. I've been seeking his face. And see, so now, see, look, look God said he, he, he acts for those that wait on him, number one. He meets, he meets him with those who are, number two, rejoicing. A joyful spirit. See? He, he don't like to meet up with complainers. Mm. Have you seen that? He really don't like meeting up with complainers. He said, enter to my courts with praise and thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Not complaining and nagging. Wow. Yes, you never read that about God. He's really not, he's always like, I don't want to be in that meeting. <laughs> you cannot worry and be joyful at the same time. You cannot complain and rejoice at the same time. You ever seen a happy complainer? <laughs> number, th number three. Does righteousness. He said, look what he said. You meet him who rejoices and does righteousness. I, I want to write, write this, this. God gave me this. Many lack the desire to obey from God's perspective. That's the only one that matters. See, a lot of times we think we're obeying, but it's from our perspective. We think we're obeying from our perspective. 
we think we're obeying from our feelings. What did I felt? We think we're obeying from our emotions. We think we're obeying from our intellect, our reasoning. But no, no, am I being obedient from God's perspective? Because that's the one that matters. Yeah. Uh, can I go a little bit deeper? If I'm not obeying him from his perspective, uh, are you sure you're on the Lord? Uh -huh. I might lack love for him. Because according to his perspective, you can't tell people that, they'll get mad. Mm -hmm. But according to God's perspective, God said, hey, if you love me, you'll obey me. Right. 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 God said, not me. See, this yeah. is his perspective. See, once again, you can't get mad at me if this is not your perspective, but I'm giving you God's perspective. God said, hey, if you love me, I'll obey me. And then he said, he meets him who remembers him in his ways. When's the last time before you did something, you asked God? Come on. No, you know, something serious. You know what I'm saying? Not just, what am I going to wear today, Lord? That don't matter. <laughs> that don't matter. <laughs> he can, but I mean, you know, you know when he's talking about some bigger thing. Amen? Amen. Let me read this and then we'll move on. Prayerlessness is wrestling with the spirit of independence from God. Prayerlessness is not the problem. Prayerlessness is not the problem. But you don't feel you need to. There is no certain sense of urgency to pray. A spirit of pride has stepped in and said you don't have to pray as much. Everything's going good. You don't need to pray as much. Pride. Wow. See, prayerlessness is not the problem. Pride has become the problem. God had done nothing for you. Quit praying. Pride. Mm. Come on. Somebody say, pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. We must lean on him more than we ever have. And I'm telling you, he loves those. That he, he loves this man. Those that seek him, my God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So now, we got to watch these distractions the enemy will try to bring. Uh, and I want to I encourage you on how to keep the anointing fresh in your life. Come on, say that. Keep the anointing. Keep the anointing. Fresh on my life. Fresh on my life. We're like reservoirs. We're like reservoirs, and God continually pours into us. And, and it's like the, the, the more things you go through, it's like the more you pour out. And so the more I really need to go to God and get refilled, replenished. So Jesus would do that often. Why? He would go along ministering, doing all these things, and then he would always separate himself to pray, refill, recharge, renew, and then go out and go out and do it, be able to do what God called him to do. Amen? The, the, the disciples saw a drop in it. Remember when they quit praying? They lacked prayer. He said, these guys only come out with prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? How come we couldn't do it? He, he, he dropped. He dropped. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? If you are after things, you will lose the anointing in no time. Let me say that again. If you are only after things, you're seeking God for things, you're seeking God to, for, for, for things, you will lose the anointing in no time. Wow. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with prospering. I believe in prosperity. Amen? Amen. I believe in prosperity. There's nothing wrong with, with prosperity, but if your motives are wrong, they're wrong. Right. Yeah. Right. If your motives are wrong, they're wrong. Period. If you're only seeking God for, for something, you will lose the anointing in no time. So the love question, this is good, the love question must be answered. Please write this statement down. The love question, and I'm almost finished, must be answered for, number one, sustaining impact for purpose. Number one, 
The love question must be answered for number one, sustaining impact for purpose. We're called for purpose. Amen? Amen? Amen. Number two, for continual availability to the kingdom of God. For continual availability to the kingdom of God. And number three, for continual attention from heaven. Listen, listen. We don't need the attention. See, here's what people, I'll just go back to Sunday's message. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego weren't doing it for likes. Come on, come on. Come on. They weren't doing it for follower, followers. They weren't doing it for a retweet or a share or a, what's it, what else is out there? They weren't doing it for, it wasn't a publicity stunt. Come on. They weren't doing it for the fame, thank you. But the conviction in their heart, the love they have for God, and for the Spirit of God. And so the love question must be answered in, in each of us individually. The love question that you and I have for God. Do, 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 does your heart cry out for him? In the morning when you wake up, do, 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 do you want to see him? Amen. Does your heart cry out for him before you go to bed? And is there a desire for you to even be in his presence? If there's not, then son, daughter, you must repent. Repent, man, Father, forgive me and help me. Help me stir up. He said, Jesus said, tell that church they've lost their first love. Tell that body of Christ. Tell that part of that body you have lost your first love. And you have, they, they don't realize how far they have fallen. And if they don't repent, if they don't overcome. Oh, come on. Come on. This is not a game. The love question, and, 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 and so God has given each of us a purpose and assignment. The Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they didn't do it for followers. They didn't do it for status. They, 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 and, so, and so now, in today's world, so that's what I'm saying. You want continual attention from heaven, not the world. Amen. And today, if you didn't get attention from the world, then what you're doing is insignificant, but not so in heaven. Wow. Come on. How many followers did they have? How many people? And, 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 and there it was just three. Daniel, just one. Nobody else. But all of heaven was pushing the like button. All of heaven was pushing retweet. They, they didn't know it was going to be. They didn't know it was going to be written in the Bible. They were just following out of love. What caused them not to bow down? It wasn't pride. It wasn't ego. It wasn't, oh, I'm not going to bow down to some. Uh, no, it was their love for God that would not let them worship some image. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen? Their love was driving them. Not pride, not ego, not status, not followers, not likes, not things, but their love for God. The love question must be answered to sustain impact for continual availability to the kingdom and for continual attention from heaven. Can I go there? Many that don't walk in love want to be used by God. Many don't want to don't walk in love and want to be leaders. Many don't walk in love uh, and they want, they want to be leaders offended. They want to be used by God unforgiving. They want to be used by God. Matthew 6 says, Jesus said, verse 14, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Why am I forgiven? Because I love God. And because he first forgave me, so I forgive. Amen? Amen. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm a leader. Come on. Come on. Right. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but I know these scriptures. 
than you should be doing. Come on. Come on. Come on. Mark 11. Mark 11. Mm. 22. Jesus answered and said, Have faith in God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, believes those things that he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. Come on, say that. He will have whatsoever he says. Come on, say that. I will have whatsoever I say. I will have whatsoever I say. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray. See, a lot of us are asking without the prayer. We're just asking but not praying. We're just asking and not seeking. Whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them, you will have them. And, there, see, that this should have been right there. Comma, and. And, whenever you stand praying, if you got anything against anyone, forgive them. Don't hold a grudge in your heart. Don't have ill will towards somebody. Let it go. Forgive them that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. If you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. So if he can't even forgive you, do you think he really wants to give you? If he can't even forgive you, what makes you think he wants to give you? Which one's more important? The forgiveness. Because without the forgiveness of sin, I can't even be with him for eternity. Do you think he would rather be with you for eternity or give you something? Come on. Amen? Amen. So here we go. So then, this is going to be a little, little. So then, prayer works by faith. Right? Prayer works by faith. So that means prayer works by love. If prayer works by faith and faith uh, uh, works through love, faith working through love. If if prayer works by faith, then that means prayer works by love. So forgive. So love God. So then. If prayer delivers by faith, then prayer delivers by love. Love will always take you to a higher mountain. All right, God. Let me just say this. You do not realize what you are losing when your heart is shifting away. You do not realize what you are losing when your desire is shifting away from the things of God. When you have a desire for God, it's like an automatic, it's like something that just turns on, you have a desire for the things of God. You have a desire for God. And we just got to be real and quit all this faking and say that, no, no, my desire is there, but I don't have a desire for things of God. Mm -hmm. They go hand in hand. That's like saying I got married to my wife, but I don't want nothing to do with my wife. (laughs) But I got married. I don't want nothing to do with it. But I'm married. And no, it's good. No, it's not. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you ready for this? Love never fails in battle. Write that down. Love never fails in battle. Say that. Love never fails in battle. What moved David to go up against Goliath While the world said it was his pride and arrogance, it was not his pride and arrogance or he would not have been delivered. Goliath would not have been delivered into his hand. But his love for God, his love for God 
drove him into battle against Goliath and love delivered Goliath into his hand with a stone? Yes, with a stone. Why? Jesus was in those stones. Why? Because his love for God was higher than the fear of this giant. What, what, whatever, I write this down, whatever love drives you into, love delivers you. Whatever love drives you into, love will deliver you. See, but it can't be your pride. It can't be ego. It can't be, oh, I'll show them. No, it must be your love, your obedience. You've got a word. Daniel, Daniel prospered in the reign of three different kings. That means he loved God over three different opinions. And he said, no matter what law, no matter what you set up, I only ha I have to I have to obey my God. Come on, come on. Yep. No matter what you set up, I've got to obey God. Because love, he he saw God. God, God never failed in a battle. God never, love never failed in a battle. Whatever love drives you into, love will deliver you. And so when, when, when God told us, keep these church doors open, y'all don't stop having church. It wasn't our pride. It wasn't ego. It wasn't, oh, we're going to show them. And we're going to, no, 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 no. It was our love for God, our obedience to the king that said, you keep having church. You keep praising my name. Now let the, let, get together and let the praise go forth. Let the praise go forth. Let worship go forth. Let the word go forth. Hallelujah. Whatever. And that's why ain't well, well, there's not going to be one feeble among us. Amen. That's not an arrogant statement. That's a love statement. Yes, sir. But what about, the, well, I, can't, I can't worry about them. I have to follow Jesus. Amen. I have to follow the word. Amen. Come on, say that with me. Whatever love, Whatever love drives me into, drives love, me into love, love will deliver me. Will deliver me. Love, love never fails. Don't, don't serve the people just yet. I want to I want to read something I read today. I just read it today, and I thought it was proper. I would, I would like to read it with you. Acts chapter five. Acts chapter five. Controversial story in the Bible. Ananias and Sapphira. Verse one says, uh, now. Uh, Barnabas had just given, sold some land and he gave it all. And uh, verse 5, it starts with now, a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. And he kept back part of the proceeds. His wife, also being aware of it, brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, now uh, this statement I, I had to study and, and pray about it and the Holy Spirit gave me some insight. Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? Keep back part of the price of the land for yourself. While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not your own to control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but you lied to God. And so I was, I was like, okay, okay, man, because this is hard. You know, they, they, start, they start dropping dead. 
What's going on here? But he, he says something. Satan filled your heart. And you lied to the Holy Spirit. So that means Ananias and Sapphira had a conversation with the Holy Spirit. For him to lie to the Holy Ghost. And I don't know how it must have went, but it went in, in a way that either the Holy Spirit said, uh, uh, he, Bar Bar they, they saw Barnabas do that, and, and Holy Spirit, or while they saw the Holy Spirit, they said, hey, uh, will you do that? Will, will, will you do what he did? Yes, Lord, we're going to do it. Hey, God spoke to me. He said, well, we're going to do it. And then when they saw all that money, the story changed. Right? That's too much. That's too much for God. We're going to keep a portion back. We're going we're to keep a portion back. We're not going to give it all to God. I want to read this. This is from my, my, my Zondervan Bible commentary. It's powerful. Note that Peter did not view the action of Ananias and Sapphira as merely incidental. He spoke of it as being inspired by Satan. And as a lie to both the Holy Spirit and God, what happened? The enemy distracted them with the money. And he could have also distracted them with what was going on in that time. Look how everybody's losing. Look how everyone is being fired from their job because they're Christians now. Because they're proclaiming Jesus as Lord now. They're, 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 they're kicking them out of home. They're losing things. That, so you, you might want to keep some. I know you told Holy Spirit. You know, you but you might want to keep some back. You might not want to give. Oh, let me say it like this: You might not want to give the whole time. Come on. It, it was a case of deceit, and it was a front, not just on the community level, but primarily before God. Deceit is spiritually disastrous, a sin whenever it is supposed, whenever it's supposed justification that sours every personal relation. Where there is even the, this is powerful, where there is even the suspicion of conscious misrepresentation and deception, trust is completely violated. Ananias and Sapphira were severely dealt with because their, their, their act of pretending to be givers. Wow. Let me read this. Now, this is from my, my leadership Bible. This is powerful. Their sin was not lack of generosity, but lack of honesty. They lied about what they had done. They wanted to be thought of as generous without paying the price. I wrote this down. I wrote this down. Sometimes we want to be thought of as tithers without actually tithing. God would not have, God would have nothing to do with it. He surgically removed the spiritual cancer from the church by taking their lives. God. Sometimes God will surgically remove spiritual cancers yeah. so they don't affect the other people. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Let's look closely at the problem and itemize it of Ananias and Sapphira. Number one, they, they were clinging to their possessions. Number two, they agreed to lie about their giving. Number three, they pretended to be someone they were not. Number four, they thought they could get by with appearing to be givers. And number five, they felt more concerned with their image than their relationship with God. Let me read that one more time. They were more concerned with their image than their relationship with God. And that's right there. When he said, you lied to the Holy Ghost. See, they had a relationship. And they, they, they were more willing to break that and look good in front of the people. And God said, you know, I'll hide you now. Wow. So now, <clears throat> here's the struggle. Not only do we live in a materialistic world, but we buy into the world's economy, right? Mm -hmm. and, and many think if we grasp and cling to possessions through our own cleverness, we'll eventually make it. However, God's economy is radically different. He's an extravagant Lord 
who gives generously to everyone. So here are some ways to cultivate generosity in your life. Number one, be grateful for what you have right now. Don't complain. Remember, don't complain. Be grateful for what you have right now. Take care of what you have right now. Be grateful for it. Uh, be a good steward of it. Number two, put God first and his ways. Put God first and his ways. Number three, don't allow greed and fear to control you. Don't allow greed and fear to control you. Number four, let me know if I'm going too fast. Number four, see money as a resource, not your source. See money as a resource, not your source. And number five, develop the habit of healthy giving. That means tithing and so so tithing and giving often. Develop a habit of healthy giving. Sometimes we hold on to our possessions because we fear we might run out. And especially in times like these, right? Uh, we hold on to our possessions because we fear we might run out. Life may seem scarce. But when we believers believe that giving is the way to live, we will produce more in the future, a life and life more abundant, just like Jesus said. Amen. He, he will bring life and life more abundant. He loves cheerful givers. Are y'all ready to give cheerfully to God? All right. Ushers, you may serve the people. Can I get an envelope, please? I, I need this. Thank you, sir. And a pen. So you got a pen. Yeah, thank you. Glory to God. week, get refreshed, and then get back. We got to do some discipling, uh, some building up of the faith.
their giving. What, what, what stuck out to you tonight? What stuck out to you tonight? Love Sir? Love always wins in battle. Amen. Someone else? Veronica. What? Anoint your shield. Why do I need to anoint my shield? Why do I need to anoint my shield? So when the enemy attacks, it don't crack. It don't crack. Amen. This Sunday, we will be in Hell Center, Texas. <laughs> They're waiting on the exact location. We're going to discuss that and get that. And then uh, we have another idea. We're going to look at it. Uh, Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Uh, two weeks, right? And we're looking at maybe doing it at the Aller Lines, Aller Liner Center and face the speakers towards the county. And invite all the moms that maybe have children locked up. Because they haven't ever seen them. And we'll be out there and we'll pray for them. And, and, and have Mother's Day service out there. And, and we're going to talk to the sheriff and see maybe some of them that are good behaviors. And maybe they can sit outside or something. I don't know. I mean, obviously say no. But uh, you have not. Because you asked not, right, Jim? You got a testimony. It's about souls. Amen. It's about souls. And see, I'll be praying for souls in Health Center. We have a revival in Health Center. Life. Amen. Amen. Jeff, is there any other announcement? Until next week. Saturday corporate prayer. Saturday corporate prayer. Corporate prayer at eight thirty, and uh, we'll be praying. Prayer is so powerful. Don't sleep on prayer. Kevin says, pray lest you fall. You can't stand without praying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, praying. Look, we have to just start being honest. I'm not. How you doing, man? I'm not. I ain't going to pray. I can't stand. <laughs> 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 well, nobody do. It. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. You been praying? No. Nope. Yeah. 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 Surprise. Tell you like it is. I don't need that. Because, oh, never mind. I, ain't gonna, I love y'all. But I speak because I love you, man. I want you to make it. I want you to make it. All right. Tell, tell two people. Uh, uh, love will deliver you. And you are dismissed. Y'all have a great night.